in almost all of the experiments that we do in general chemistry, at some point we're going to be using some liquid reagent, whether it's an acid, a base solution, or even just some water. So we want to take a look at some of the glassware we've got available to help us handle that liquid in a reasonable way. So I've got a few pieces. Let's just take a little walk through and look at some of the glassware that we're going to use in the lab. The one that you're probably most familiar with are beakers. So I've got a couple beakers here, but what are beakers really good for? Well, let's think about some of their features. They've got a flat bottom, so they'll sit on the bench. They've got a pretty wide open top, so it's easy to add things to it. It's easy to put probes and, and other things into the beaker. But are they good for some of the other things we want to do? A lot of people, if you look at the side of the beaker, a lot of people will look at this and will use beakers as a way to measure amounts of liquid. That's usually not a really good use of a beaker because if we look at this beaker for example, we can see that it says right on the label that this beaker's graduations are only accurate to about 5%. Now if we're on a 300 milliliter volume, 5% of 300 milliliters is, well, let's see, 300 times 0 0.05 would be 15 milliliters. So if I want to measure 300 milliliters accurately, 5% error is quite a bit. So we probably don't want to use beakers to measure any volume all that accurately. What are beakers really good for? Well again, we've got a lot of access with the wide open top and beakers are really good for getting approximate amounts. If I know that I'm going to need about 50 milliliters of a reagent from a stock bottle to do a reaction, well a beaker is a great way to get that. I can go to the stock bottle, I can pour out 50 milliliters, and I'm pretty close. Then I can go back and measure it with more appropriate glassware. So those are beakers. What's next? Well, another piece of glassware that you've got in your drawers that you may have used so far are Erlenmeyer flasks. So I've got a couple of Erlenmeyer flasks here. And again, if we look very closely at the label, we can see that it says right on the label that this is only good for plus or minus 5% on the volume measurement. So again, with that 5% error, Erlenmeyer flasks aren't good at very accurately measuring volumes, but what are they good for? Well, they've definitely got a different shape than a beaker, and the shape is what really matters when we're looking at an Erlenmeyer flask. One thing that we can do with an Erlenmeyer flask that's a little harder to do with a beaker is to just cover the top or put a stopper in it. It's much easier to find a stopper that's this big around than it is to find a stopper that's this big around. So if we want to put a stopper on a solution for a little while, Erlenmeyer flask probably a little bit easier. The other place that Erlenmeyer flasks really shine, and this is why they're shaped this way, is, well, it's probably easier to show you. So, I've got some, this is just blue food coloring and water to make it easier to see these liquids. Let me pour some liquid in there. Let me pour some liquid in there. Okay, when these are sitting on the bench, no big deal. But what if I'm adding something to this and I want to mix my solution up? I don't have a stir bar, I don't have a stir rod, so what might I want to do? How about swirl it? Well, I can swirl a beaker and, yeah, I'm doing okay, but if this got much fuller than it is, I would probably slop, oh, and there I went, I'd probably slop all over the bench top. 
What about that Erlenmeyer flask? Because it has these curved, these cone-shaped sides, I can shake this pretty darn hard, agitate the solution inside, and I really don't disturb or I don't lose any of it by splashing out like I did with the beaker. So Erlenmeyer flasks, as far as their accuracy, probably no better than a beaker, but if you're doing something that you want to put a cap on or that you want to swirl vigorously, Erlenmeyer flasks are definitely the way to go. What other glassware do we have in our drawers? You've all at some point used a graduated cylinder. So I've got a couple of graduated cylinders here. These happen to be 100 milliliter graduated cylinders. And hopefully by this time you're getting the idea if you want to know how good a piece of glassware is for a different purpose, not a bad idea to read the label. Both of these, just like their bigger brothers that we used, are 5%, plus or minus on the volume measurement. What about these graduated cylinders? So if we look very closely at the label on this graduated cylinder, what does it show us? It shows us that tall, that's tolerance, is plus or minus 0.6 milliliters. That's pretty good. 0.6 milliliters on up to 100 milliliters is a pretty reliable piece of measurement. Now the other thing to notice on here is this next line, this next line that says TD EX 20 degrees Celsius. What does that mean? Well that TD is going to become more important later and it's going to come up a few times, but TD means to deliver. So this piece of glassware is calibrated to deliver the measured amount of liquid at 20 degrees Celsius.